Hello, hello everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our first CBW Film Night. Commonwealth <laughs> Business Women Network Kenya Film Night. And with me today, as usual, glamorous, great one person, our chairperson, Nana Wajau. And nice Githenji. Over to you, Nana. Welcome. <laughs> First of all, I mean, it is wonderful to be back on this platform. Nice. It's so good to have you back on to Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya Film Night. But guess what? It is such a, ooh, to have crossed the new year in peace, in health in wealth and abundance. So we really, really are excited to be back here. So Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya Film Night. They say that filmmaking is a way of living many, many lifetimes over and over again. And I have no doubt if you watched this movie, you actually relived your life many times over. I know personally, I could pick characters in this movie that I could call by name from my family. Karibuni, karibuni sana, Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya. This is a place we love to laugh and we love to enjoy ourselves. But let me share a little bit about who we are as Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya and why. Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya, Phil Knight. We are a ground partner of Commonwealth Business Women Network, CBWN, which is a registered community interest company in the UK. CBWN is an accredited organization directly recognized by 54 governments of the Commonwealth across six continents. We are committed to advancing the U.S. Sustainable Development Goal number five and the Commonwealth Charter. Commonwealth Business Women Network, we are focused on women's leadership and women's economic empowerment. We are on a mission. We are on a mission to network the Kenyan business women and connect them to over 1 billion women in the Commonwealth, uh, Commonwealth Network to connect, collaborate, and do commerce. That's the end game. Having said that, our mission is to strengthen the Commonwealth, build businesses, and advance women. And we do this through what we call our three T's of talent, training, and trade. Talent, training, and trade. Through these three T's, we are able to encourage, enable, and embed women's economic empowerment. So why the film night? Why creatives? Because as you may agree, the film industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And Kenya specifically, there is a huge potential. It's a young industry and there is great opportunity for women in this industry to build businesses, to advance themselves and to develop the talent. So we are here to support women and creatives in this industry. Look out for what we are calling skill to scale program. It's a program tailored for creatives uplifting, capacity building, training for all creatives, and we are deliberately targeting women in the, in the, in the, um, women in the film industry. Look out for that. It is run by our very own vice chair, Pauline Warui. She will be unfolding it within this quarter. You are a creative, you are in the film industry. Watch for that coming soon. Njoki? I am very excited, as I said, about this movie. Yeah. I could identify personalities. I could call them by name. Yes. They have names, and they are my brothers. They are my <laughs> sisters. They are my uncles. They are my aunties. But yes. there is a deeper discussion that is going to unfold, I am sure, because there is so much yes. dimension to this yes. film that you yes. know. I'm looking forward to engaging and yes. unfolding. 
Back to you, Jockey. Yeah. Yeah, let's first uh, give nice um, Githenji a moment to say to say something about herself, and then I will summarize the film for those who may not have watched, so that they know what are the themes we are picking up from that film. Because for the audience who are out there, you don't have to have watched the film to participate in this. I promise you, we just have to tell you what it's about, and you say, "I know about that." So nice. Um, us that tell our audiences a little bit of who you are. All right. Um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's great to be back with you, CBWKN. I got the initials <laughs> right. I am Nice Kizinji, a performing artist and all right performer. I sing, I act, and when trained, I can dance. I am doubling in production and directing, and I also train actors. I think this is one of the, my favorite uh, forums to be in because of how much creativity that comes in between it's like it's a boiling pot of women and creativity and strength and power yeah thank you so much and i want to thank you for having run from the set where you are actually <laughs> acting a few moments ago to being here with us thank no you so problem. much now let us tell our audiences what this film is about this film i believe comes from south africa and this film was I believe written and produced by siblings. That's the amazing thing. Mm. And, and mm. the fact that they even call it, you know, um, I think I believe I have the title somewhere. Yes. Uh, sorry. How no, to ruin a Christmas. Christmas. Yes. How to, How ruin, to ruin a Christmas. Christmas. Yes. The wedding. You know, like oh, this yes. wedding that just ruined. Christmas. And that's why most of us watch this film over Christmas, you know, because it would be uh, on Christmas. Yeah. Long and short about this film. One family, the girl's family, then the man's family, two different tribes, two different economic groups. Oh boy, put that together. It is a cocktail of conflict and humor and abuses. There's a politician there who wants to be noticed. There's a, a brother-in-law there who is, well, he's never really responsible. He's just everywhere. Life is easy. There is a girl who wants to keep this prim and proper image, especially to be accepted in the rich family. And then there's the main character. <laughs> it's the character. She'll just do whatever she wants. She seems to be a misfit everywhere she goes, but she is who she is, you know? She is who she is. So that's where we are at. Now, there are two key things here that relate to us as women and women in the common business network. One thing is that we tend to be very Christian-oriented in Africa. So there's a faith aspect. And then there's the, which the fifth aspect comes in in that we have Christmas, we celebrate Christmas, we bring all relatives together and all drama happens. I wonder if there's any listener there who joined any relatives. We know it's Corona time and there wasn't so much of big Christmas gatherings, but I wonder if there's any listener out there, or viewer out there who say, we never fight over Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Then, Weddings, bring in different personalities, different tribes, different faiths together. That is Africa. That is Africa. How does it relate to us? How can we have good relationships, grow each other, spread our wings wider, and have a real beautiful environment where we all grow and accept each other's differences? Nana, pick up from there and give us a comment. Hmm. <laughs> I love uh, let me let me touch on the misfit. Yes. Because there is always I hope my mic is clear. Is it clear? And it okay? is clear, but it, I don't yeah. know that you that gets onto it or something is touching it, but you're clear. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me know if it gets too serious. Maybe I can switch. Okay, no, you're good. Let me speak about the misfit because mm -hmm. for me there is always the misfit and most likely you are the misfit in the family. But the misfit is, um, to me, she is the only person who was real. She was real to the core of who she is as a person, 
what she stood for and what she fought for. And for me, that was really, that's the person, that's the character that attracted me, despite the fact that there was a lot of disapproval around her, hence the reason misfit, uh, you know, the misfit, but she stood for who she was and I could relate to that. There's always a misfit in the family, but I think if we could all be comfortable with being mis mis the misfits, is it the mis misfits? Yes. In any organization, in any setting, then we would all have reality checks mm -hmm. in our families, in our organizations, in our communities. However, let's also touch on um, the different aspects of the of of this 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 re, this union you know the poor versus yes. the rich the upper mm. class versus the lower class i found that the there was more to the the father of the groom the politician who was mm. more into himself than the daughter's wedding or what she or the the son's wedding and what he needed he was more concerned with his own personal gains what this wedding had to give him as a politician as opposed to the union of the two lovebirds yes yes mm. let me hear, let's hear from nice yeah it's interesting nice. you say that because nice. yeah, it's yeah. just interesting you say that because for the most part if you see i'm gonna say african weddings because those are the ones i've been I, i'm patched to i've been seeing it's interesting that the it's like when you graduate, you're doing it for your parents. When you get married, you're doing it for your parents. So there's something very honest and real about this uncle in particular. Because at the end of the day, most of us are okay just doing come we stay, a simple civil union. Um, being together, have you heard about living together apart, you guys? Have you heard about that? Yes. You know, we... <laughs> Some of us okay, are comfortable. Okay, what is that nice? Okay, what is that? Living together? Living together apart. Is that you and I are together, but we don't uh -huh. live in the same house. So oh. we are together, but we are apart. Because what makes of, us together? What makes us together? Because we love each other. We are in a relationship. We could be, be married. There is really no in-betweens. It's just, it, it takes away from the idea of being confined to the same room and going crazy. And you so know how it is. When you are connected, but physically, you can be away. Thank you. You can okay. sleep well, over. Well, I can well, sleep well. over. So it, it makes it, it's like you're dating. You know, Nana is a married lady. She really First wants that. I'm, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very um, traditionally married. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrown <laughs> off by all this. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Living, living together. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wait, wait, explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old. You mm -hmm. live together apart. No, you don't live together. No, no. no. It's called, it's you called living, living together apart. So you are living together, but everybody is has their own house, house. their own space. No, 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 not allowed to date or it's not an open relationship. It's okay. just that as far okay. as space is concerned, we are both not confined to the same house. I have my house, you have yours. We could live in the same house. We could be in my house or the other house. But there isn't that constant, I have to see you every night. I have to cook for you every day. I have to talk. Sometimes I, I want to come out of, the, out of the office and really have no conversation <laughs> with anyone. And so now, is, it, is this the concept of a modern woman where I don't want to get home and I must waste dinner? Well, as me, no. I've been to work just like you've been, you know? Not necessarily, because if you say it's a concept of the modern woman, it kind of makes it, it sort of makes it look like, like it's something bad. So it's not about a concept of the modern woman, more mm -hmm. about a concept behind making marriages a bit more, less obligatory and more, we are doing mm -hmm. this because we want to, and we would like to, and we love to do this for each other, as opposed mm -hmm. to being milk. It takes mm -hmm. away from all that pressure. It takes yeah. away from the pressure that you have to take care of me and pay my bills. And mm -hmm. same that I know it's weird. I can see Nana's face. Nana is like, no, don't worry. I, I am still so, talking I'm, about I'm, 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 it. It's three generations <laughs> above me. So <laughs> forgive Could me. It's a lot to do with now people are 
I'll use, try and use this as positively as possible. They yes. are shunning the societal obligations. I'll call them shackles, you know? Mm -hmm. And that I can still love my own way. I yes. can still, be, we can still be a couple in our own way. But nice in this very awkward formula you have told us that's happening. Uh -huh. And you see, Nana and I might be a little bit older with me being much, much older. So I, I need to be taken pole pole. Okay. What happens when kids come in this union? So we are yet to figure out us more than women. <laughs> <laughs> we're still trying to work around that i don't know how they're doing it with kids it's very no. interesting um as far as kids are concerned i know there's this thing called nesting so it means uh -huh. people having like three houses yeah. and so the kids don't have to move you do not destabilize the children yeah. yes that's so maybe this week you're in the you're at home the next mm. week i'm home sometimes yeah. we are both home but the kids are not moved Kids need to have a home, but because it's the grown-ups who need space and they need to figure out things that they need to, you know, sort of sometimes decompress. So yes. they move away from the stable home once in a while. That I've had. When, when I want to decompress, I, I take a, a road trip with my girlfriends, you know, and we go to Diani, we go to Malindi, we go to Ghana to uh -huh. decompress, get, a, get away for a week or two. Yeah. But I hear you, Nice. I hear what you're saying is that now people are defining their own relationships. Yes. And so back uh, to this uncle, mm -hmm. we, that is the guy we're talking about. So I yeah. feel like just him, like most of our parents, most of our relatives, the weddings are theirs. And so he needed yeah. to make a statement, you know. And I think that's the biggest problem because most times we find... Weddings are for the family. They are never for the couple. And I feel, I find that sad. It's are for the family for sure. Uncle? Are you the talking about the uncle who was to bring meat for the wet for the pre-wedding, the day before the wedding? Oh, sorry, for the and uncle, the the dad, father in law, father in law, yeah. the politician, okay. the, the politician. father of the bride, is it? Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. his son. Also, his son was like that. You know, he's got mm. a wife. He's really there. But there was also yeah. the uncle, the one who was bring, brought a live goat uh, when he was asked to bring the meat to be cooked for that lunch. But mm. even he also laid the fair like, I mean, what are you worried about, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's going to be but but let, Nana, let me go back to, to what I said about decompressing. And you said you would go out on a road trip with your girlfriend. But it looks like the trend we are hearing about is decompressing, is becoming the default. Mm, <laughs> you know? mm, Coming mm. together becomes now the occasion, you know. It's very mm. interesting. And I wonder what that's doing to, and also the, the what, what I said about people even having three houses. I have seen even here in Nairobi where a couple divorces after so many years or separates. But they decide the must the kids must have continuity and not to disrupt them too much and mm. not to make them decide who goes with who. Mm. So they keep the family house, and the mm -hmm. father looks for his own apartment, the mother looks for her own apartment, they take turns being in the family home. It's such a modern developed country concept, but it seems to be picking up in Africa well. I don't know, but how many people can afford three houses, you know? How yes. many people can actually afford three houses? I mean, yes. realistically, how many? Mm -hmm. However, I mean, I'm saying, to me, it sounds, okay, whether you call it marriage, whether you call it a partnership or friendship or union, you know, it's all in the label. Mm -hmm. But um, if, my and I wouldn't, I don't think for me it matters, you know, when you are, when you are dating, when you are not committed, I only sort of begin to get concerned when the children come into the picture. Mm -hmm. I come from the school of thought that mm -hmm. if you're old enough to, yes. to, 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 to conceive and produce children, you should be responsible enough to yes. stay in this relationship, come rain or shine and raise these children work. and yes, make it work. And I'm feeling that maybe the younger generation, you, 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 
you, you are too, you're, you, you give up too fast because in any, even this film we watched, there is no relationship that does not have conflict. Um, what I feel is that the young people, you don't have a backbone to mm. stand firm in mm. your commitment. But and maybe anyway, for me, you can call it anything you want to call it. But yeah. if you're going to go ahead and bring children into this union, you must be aware that at any given time, things are going to go rocky. Mm. And you yeah. must have the backbone. Nice, nice before you comment. Yeah, nice before you comment. Let me read something, N Nafisa Patwa. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And um, I think she's all the way in Sydney. And she says, um, I'm feeling quite connected to you three. It's an interesting discussion. First, she's asked, her, do you all live in Nairobi? Oh, yes. yes. We are right yes. here in Nairobi. We are right here in Nairobi. Then somebody else who's got the name Skylight, Jeff. I like that Skylight. She says, interesting conversation. Living together apart, exclamation mark. Still disgusting. She's still digesting. She's still digesting. She's still digesting. Yes, she's still digesting. Yeah. So now, nice, before you respond to Nana, could it be the younger generation, whereas it was drummed on us, patience, resilience, that's what made us successful, that's what made us good people. But let's admit it, the millennials, the younger generation, they're impatient. They want it now, here, and they don't want that long-term commitment. If it's not working, they would rather not spend their energies to try and make it work but they want to spend their energies looking for what it is they want because they want it here and now could it be a and result with of no that compromise time? and with no compromise i want it the way i want it <laughs> no i don't to. think so mm. i would like to clear this up for the rest of us millennials right yes. <laughs> not, you are judging us the thing is this we grew up thinking that marriage is about staying together and suffering through problems. And today, if you are slapped, it's okay. It was a mistake. It was a slip of the hand. Go and talk it over <laughs> and then come back. And then one day he punches you like, oh, it's okay. It's just the second time. I won't do it again. We grew up. Most of, the, we have, most of us have grown up knowing that marriage is about resilience and struggling and staying together and fighting. The difference here with our generation is we think it's okay for our marriage to be good. It's okay for us to live happily ever after. I'm not saying we don't, we will never fight, but I am saying it doesn't mean a marriage is working because we have gone through problems. A marriage, the, the sign of a good marriage is it how many problems you've had. So that's the, it's not that because we are not resilient, it's not because we are not, we have no backbone. We believe that we can create our own future and our own future looks like they are up. It's possible to have a good marriage. And so if it's not, why waste more time on this? Yet you could go out there and find whoever is meant for you. Somebody that you will treat, each, you will, maybe you will fill each other's lives. So it's less about lacking backbone or lacking resilience. We yeah. believe that marriage is all about the struggle. It can be oh. happy. And we, we plan to make it that way. I'm actually with you. Nice. I'm actually with you. You took words right out of my mouth. I wanted to say... I've been married for 21 years and I can tell you for sure marriage is not suffering marriage is not punching bag and marriage is not a, an accumulation of trophies of uh, problems yes it is not <laughs> but it is not. <laughs> the married one among the three of us tell me why is it every time during wedding ceremonies in church and in and all those many ceremonies, because you remember in Africa, I mean, going to church is a final leg. Otherwise, there's been many other legs you go through. Why do they always emphasize when the problems come, when the problems, you know, they make good thing marriage is a problem, you know? Why do they I, I, emphasize on the beauty and the fun and the love? Why do they have to keep going for the negative? I, That's I think it's in human nature, Joki. I believe yes. it's human nature. Even mm. in news, good news is makes no news. <laughs> good news is no news. 
<laughs> we all want to hear who's killing who, who's drowned yes. who, yes. where are the bombs, you know, mm. which accident. By mm. nature, humans, we are more attracted to yes. adversity than mm. the good. So mm. even it's not a surprise that we focus on what will go bad even oh. before you enter the marriage. Yes. However, let me go back to um, to to the the union of two people who've decided to yes. take this to a step further that's more uh, official, you know, yes. legally recognized. Let me say that because mm -hmm. you could choose to still have a relationship and not mm -hmm. get married. And to me, there's no problem at all with that. But if you yes. choose to get into marriage, I think yes. people should get in with a with a an open mind in the sense that this is a relationship. It's mm -hmm. a relationship like my relationship with Njoki, my relationship with Nice, my relationship in my family, and they mm -hmm. are good times. It's yeah. just that we like to focus on bad times. That's what gets people's attention. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I want see. to encourage young people that, first of all, you don't have to get married. You actually mm -hmm. don't. Not in my world. You don't have to. If you okay. choose to, Mm. Go in knowing that a partnership, a union, to have somebody by you is a beautiful adventure in life, to share your life with somebody that you've been with for 22 decades. You've been somebody to, do you know how you know each other? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people, even if you've been friends in Jockey with your friends yes. for 20, 30 years, everybody yes. goes home. When you fight, you don't see each other for yes. a week, and then maybe you come back. Yes. My husband and I, every year except 2020, we mm -hmm. take four to six weeks holiday, mm -hmm. just the two of us. Mm -hmm. wow. By the way, even mm -hmm. if we fight wherever we are, do you know there's nobody? There's nowhere to run. <laughs> Sometimes we're in a country where we can't speak the other language. We only have the two of us. Yes. So you can't talk, talk, talk to a stranger and go like, oh my gosh, I'm, she drove me crazy. I, mean, you I know? am going nowhere. I will wake up in the morning. We fought yesterday. He's there. And he's there 24-7 because he's not even going to work. And I am yes. not going to work. Yes. So yes. it reaches a point where we start saying, eh, nikama nikubaya nikubaya. Can we just go for an Yeah, yeah. But you see, Nana, is because you recognize this has to work and and each person is not a clone of the other. It's like the differences should even complement people. So there's got to be accepted, you know. That's interesting. Somebody says, I think Rachel is saying, young people give up very fast. He, she likes the comment you made. And then mine where I said, young people want it good and now. Then Anne Mushiri says, mm, interesting discussion here, very enlightening. But I want, to, I, want to agree. I want to hear of mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is actually living, what was the term that Nice told us? Living, living together apart, apart. apart. Yes. living together apart. I wish is somebody, somebody out there, there who is yes. living yeah. together apart? Yes, and tell us what that is is like and what yes. it's all about, especially mm -hmm. if there yes. are even children involved. Yes, how does that really work? Yeah. yeah, somebody tell us. It doesn't have to be you. Just somebody tell us. Share it with us. Yeah. Now, Nana and um, oh, Nice has come back. Sorry, Nice, okay. lost you for a few minutes. Let yeah. me change the discussion a little bit towards the role of the in-laws. That girl and that young man were really in love. But by the end of the film, you're thinking, these two, would they ever get married? And it's not them who did anything yeah. wrong. It's mm. the fights around them, you know, to the point where the, the, the politician's wife is even saying, you know, you cannot belong to a kind of class, you know, sort of thing, you know. And I looked at the couple and I was feeling so sorry for them because like, it's like they were innocent and they were genuinely in love. But because of our African weddings who are in laws have to come in and take responsibility, actually they become like the main characters in this film. I yeah. mean, in life, you know, it's like yeah. they're in love. I do remember when my brother who married very late, when he came and told my parents, I'm going to get married, but I want a very small wedding. 
you see, he had spent a lot of time overseas. Yeah? So he had his own prescription of why he wants his wedding to be. I was there, very young girl, and my dad said, you, you have told us what you want. You sit there, let us now take over. You know? So the wedding that was supposed to be so small, we turned our whole cow grazing ground into the wedding grounds, if you see what I mean, you know? It became the, this, the, 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 the community function, you know? So let's talk about the in-laws. Do they make the marriages better? Do they help bond them? Or do they look at the cracks and make the cracks carries and, and, and yeah, what happens? I think in-laws just live vicariously through the married couple. Everyone is trying to fit. Like I had, I either didn't have a wedding or my wedding was bad or we couldn't afford these things. Mm -hmm. And so nice is getting married. Okay. Everything I wanted, she's getting. How I yes. pictured mine is how, I think that's the simple reason. They live vicariously through the, the new couple, trying to fix their past, I guess. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. It feels they like that. They trying to get what they had wanted through the person. It's mm. like, imagine an African girl telling the mother, I'm getting married and I'm wearing a red wedding dress. Oof. Yeah. Even, forget red, even just light blue. Just okay. light blue. Oh. <laughs> By yeah. the way, Joki, my sister-in-law got married in a red wedding dress. Uh -huh. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say something about in-laws. Mm -hmm. I know we're always talking about in-laws in a negative light, but let me let me let me speak for them. They'll be shocked mm -hmm. that I'm speaking for them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think there is a place for in-laws for family. Yes. And I think I, I wish we had um unfortunately our pastor, you know, cancelled on us last minute, but yeah. I think there was a place for the family to get involved. You know, this family literally marrying into or this family. Mm -hmm. so speaking as a person who's been married for over two decades, I can tell you that it does help to have okay. the backing of family. And I don't just mean my my family, I mean my in-laws. There is a huge support system that mm -hmm. comes with that family. Okay. And let's not you know, kid ourselves. Eh? This is still relationships. Uh, we still disagree and so on and so on. However, there is a greater good in having the support of my in-laws. Mm -hmm. Not just for me as Nana, as wife, but also as a mother and mm -hmm. as part of the community. It makes a huge, huge support system, especially mm -hmm. when you get into trouble. And when I say you get into trouble, I'm not talking about marital trouble. It could be I lost my mother. You know, for example, I lost my mother. It could be I'm having challenges. Um, COVID came, we lost we lost, uh, you know, income, we lost this and that. That support system is a very, very important support system. Mm -hmm. And as Africans, we don't go to, 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 to see psychologists and so on. Our support system is our family. Yes. If you can find your family supporting you in the times of need, that's what they are for. Any challenge, the families come together and they make sh let you know as young people who've just gotten married that guess what? This is not unique to you guys. Mm -hmm. People, we all went through this. You can mm -hmm. manage, talk, mm -hmm. uh, take mm -hmm. time out, take a weekend, go somewhere, the two of you, and speak about mm -hmm. what challenges you are having. So I would like to, to, to talk about that in terms of the support system that, mm -hmm. you know, this extended family brings to you. Mm -hmm. Embrace them. Okay. So and I like that when you say the counseling, because counseling in the African context was always in, intertwined with our day-to-day -day life. It wasn't like making an appointment to go and sit mm -hmm. in somebody's office to get counseling. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what Napisa has to say 
mm-hmm. one of our listeners because he's a she's a counselor and a remedial therapist. I don't know what mm-hmm. is remedial therapy, but I'm noticing the word counselor. So post something for us, the Anafisa, about in-laws and counseling. But Nana, on the reverse, there are times some people go look for a counselor they will pay money for because their in-laws have given them help. <laughs> And sometimes, on top of, I, I, I don't, don't want to. Keep... I do not want us to focus on the in-laws giving us hell. I want yeah. us to know any relationship can give you hell. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. So now, before you comment, let us now go back to what was happening with the two families at the beginning, mm. and this will remove the hell aspect with the in-laws. I think neither were ready to really accept the other their backgrounds, their way of thinking. I think each wanted to show off to the other, you know? And maybe that's why there was a rift for them. But towards the end, I think it's the episode three, you can actually see them now starting to accept. Not only that, the way they treated each other, they started seeing the, their own problems within their own family. Remember the politician's wife and the politician, they started dealing with real problems between the two of them yeah. as a result of how they were treating the other in-laws. Yeah. I like that, but I love the humor. The humor of these people taking over a boutique hotel and taking over the kitchen to cook for the in-laws. I think the tradition was the girl side was to cook for the boy's side, isn't it? And I think the girl's side, because they came from the village and this event was taking place in a beautiful hotel, I think they just hired the hotel plus the kitchen. If you remember the manager telling them they should remove those things they've left at the front yeah. and yeah. they didn't expect the three-legged pots or whatever, whatever, you know. So even yeah. the hotel was looking down on them. But I love the way they stood their ground. This is how I we think- yeah, I feel on. like they. I feel like um, initially the rich family decides, okay, let's take hot- the hotel, let's book the whole place up for our whole wedding party. Plus, the hotel is going to cater for us. Yeah. To some extent, I I see some of my mother in the other <laughs> lady, because mm. my mother would never let you embarrass her. It doesn't matter yeah. what she doesn't have or has. She's going yeah. to show you that you can do this. And so yeah. I feel that whole move for uh, we are going to cook for them. It was yes. a thing for, it was almost to show that we won't let them do everything for us. We have to show that we are capable of doing a couple of things. This yeah. other family was working less from, it, it was working from a defense point of view. Uh-huh. They were being yeah. very defensive about the whole situation. Yeah. And I, I really do wonder whether this relationship in the first place started right. Mm-hmm. The couple. Because yeah. you start it, you start a relationship, right? I visit mm-hmm. your family, you visit mine. Of course, no family is perfect. But after a couple of months or years or whatever, you start to realize what the other side is like. But within your bond, you guys are okay here. You just know yeah. our people are crazy. Our people are crazy, but we are fine. And if yeah. that had started right, it wouldn't have affected their wedding as much. Yeah, it wouldn't have right. affected their relationship. Probably they would have just sat back and gone, okay, let's see our crazy families tear each other down and then we're going to get married but the fact that they got sucked into it something wasn't right with the beginning of their relationship i think Mm. with with that let's follow the line of the girl was a little bit embarrassed of her black sheep sister Mm. and was always wondering what would she do wrong again because for her keeping a prim proper picture to the in-laws was important and i i I was siding with the crazy girl because she was (laughs) She was real. So could it be at times overall, some of the challenges we get, and I think it's the world over, is because we are not accepting who we are. We are trying to have a facade that we think is what will be accepted by the other party. Mm -hmm. Then, Unfortunately, nature has this nasty habit of just coming out when we least expect it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, yeah, what do you think? I think it is, yeah. Um, today I had a very, a very interesting conversation with someone who happens to be a psychologist. And mm-hmm. he asked me an interesting question. He asked, what is normal? And I couldn't figure it out. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think it's this thing with the main, with the main uh, actor in the film. I forget her name. Okay. 
we expect normal to look a certain way that when you're just a butterfly when you're the odd when when you're that person who follows your conscience your instincts your gut feeling you're not normal because yeah. it feels like normalcy is being prim and proper it's being careful it's being cautious about it's being normal nowadays is not being yourself ah so, you get what i mean so mm. once you start being just once you start living for what you're for like once you start following your soul listening to the world listening to nature all that sort of stuff you know people think you're abnormal because you're not going to church you're not in a straight relationship you're not what why are yeah. you doing these things yeah you are, i think you're that, living together but apart you know you're living together <laughs> but apart yeah, exactly. you know <laughs> so I, i think we have we have misused the word normal and we've used it to segregate some people in our society but could yeah. it be nice that in african culture we are not allowed to be our normal because there are certain codes and certain rules that we might follow um mm. how many of us when you are into your 30s they look at you like why aren't you married what have men done to you or if you say i don't want a relationship they say so you've been hurt and that's why you don't want to I go know. back who broke your heart nice you like cats and your cats are all over walking around behind you i'm sure yeah, you your cats are being not being normal. Normal. children why are you keeping cats you know i know <laughs> crazy what cat lady what's wrong with you nice <laughs> i know yeah nice has, has, nice has four cats you know yes is that normal and, nice it is normal i have four cats <laughs> and uh, i dare add i have been i have been single for 5 years so i sound even more abnormal i must <laughs> say to the rest of the world <laughs> you and i am having four cats i can see one of our guests is in the waiting room i'm just asking i'm waiting for her to show her video and i put her in let me okay. let me, let me, shout out. Out. Let me go go on to florence thank you are you ready to one yeah Yeah I'm shouting okay. out to Florence and Benedette. Benedette okay. our finance director is in the house. Yes. So can you tell us about living apart? Yes. Let's also go to living apart. Let's also welcome Pinky. Pinky I'm glad you've made it. I know you're stuck in traffic. Welcome. We've been having a big debate about African weddings and um we have people on the if you check on your right hand side some people are giving us comments from facebook so pinky you are kenyan you of indian origin do in laws fight among the indians <laughs> oh my gosh that's that's a question that i i only have one answer to and the answer is absolutely yes i don't mm-hmm. think it matters whether you're indian or african or white i think there's where egos are concerned there'll always be drama uh-huh. and i think weddings is where you find all the drama um, all the egos all the egos so late mm. <laughs> and thank you um, i was going to say um mm-hmm. to answer the question for pinky hi pinky you should you guys could find a show called meet my in-laws or something and mm-hmm. it's indian Mm-hmm. You do not want to see the madness that happens when you bring your Indian parents to meet your boyfriend or girl. Oh God! Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's it it gets us crazy. It doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Okay, go ahead. They say the only difference between in-laws and outlaws is outlaws are actually wanted. <laughs> Okay, we need to have a good laugh on that one. I think we're having so many quotable quotes in this discussion, you know. Now, Pinky, tell us, and um, forgive our ignorance. We hear among the Indians, it's the girl who pays the dowry, whereas for us, it's the opposite. So can we assume then your fights are less than ours? How does, does the dowry bring any tensions in the relationships? Because here we are looking at the topic of relationships. So let me give you a little bit of history on the dowry. Uh, the dowry was actually an inheritance that mm-hmm. was uh, supposed to be passed down from the girl's family to the girl. But, you know, it was in an era where the girl was not allowed to inherit. 
Um, okay. The law was that any woman could not inherit or have her own finances. Um, mm -hmm. So, so um, they would give it to her husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you know, when we moved into this 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 new time, don't and worry, age, your baby is about to come to you. I can hear your baby somewhere around there. It's okay if you can come on the screen. That's okay. No apologies. Mm -hmm. They're arguing. You know, this is the world of Zoom, so there, I, I will actually move. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yes. mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is the digital world where, you know, our, yes. our children are very much uh, a part of our discussion. Yes. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. That's fine. No worries. Yes. So mm -hmm. I was saying that, you know, um, the girl was, uh, as in olden times, it's, it's actually inheritance that was passed on to her husband. So it, he looks after it, but they sh it's for her to use, right? Okay. Uh, and the law has since changed. Of course, in India, it's changed that uh, the woman can earn, the woman can inherit. But sadly, because it is, you know, um, very, uh, I don't know if it's the patriarchy. I should, I don't know if I should say that, but yes. um, the, the dowry, uh, law has not changed, so it's it's uh -huh. it's changed to suit people. So th there is still a law that yes. you must give dowry when you your daughter gets married off. Wow! Wow! Which is so unfortunate, yeah. Yes. So, so the dowry <laughs> is given to the husband, even initially. Absolutely. And they can, and you see, before they agree to marry, and this is now, I'm talking about, you know, within the villages of India um, and people who have very um, old fashioned thinking, um, mm -hmm. the family can come and ask for anything. We've heard of stories of, you know, people asking for acres and acres of land, uh, wow. cars, flats, fridges, you name it. Wow. 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 So, but originally it was supposed to be the girl's inheritance because the girls couldn't inherit. So originally it sounds like it had a good principle, but Absolutely. over time it got ruined. Okay. Yeah, but even if it had a good principle, why wasn't that dowry given to the woman if it was hers? Because by law, the woman could not have any finances in her name. Hmm. Nana, it's very much like Africa. By yeah. the way, originally, I remember my dad well, making but in, the the day, originally, in Africa, the, mm. the dowry is not meant for the woman. This is different. What Pink is saying is different. No, I was saying the what is similar is women not owning property. Because yes. that's how it was in Africa. My it's dad used to make fun and tell us we don't even own the chicken we are eating, you know? And, you and don't even own a voice. <laughs> A woman should not should be seen, but just only be uh, you know. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. be seen but not be heard. However, yeah. now in these times, my question is: considering that the women are now breadwinners and sometimes the the core breadwinner of the house, mm -hmm. should really dowry still be paid, or should that just be abolished? I'm trying to figure out in this. Mm -hmm day and age what where what's the role of dowry in african context at least what's the role so, of dowry in this day and age this is is somebody is somebody might, let's crack it somebody might crack it yeah just check your mic good it's done go ahead mm -hmm. yeah so uh, this coming from a very unmarried and does not want to be married person i do think that dowry is and was meant to be a thank you to the parents. Mm -hmm. It's not buying someone. It's not giving back how much the parents spent on their education. It's none of that. It's not making the other parents rich. I think it was just a general, see how I would come visit your parents, Joki, and we are not related, but it's only right for me to bring a packet of milk and some sugar, you know that thing. Yes. So I think that is what dowry was meant to be for. And then we made it a transaction for some yes. reason. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We made it commercial, that's for sure. Yeah. So now, let me now ask about, um, thank you while, while you were stuck in traffic, you talked about 
um, how the in-laws really uh, issued. I, I, I challenged, Nana is the only one here and now you who are married. So I asked about um, why is it during weddings, people are just being told there'll be problems, there'll be problems, is how to deal with problems, which Nana actually said it's human nature. It's like when we hear there was an accident, we always ask how many are dead. We never ask how many Li have lived to tell about it, you know. However, with the in-laws, we looked at them as a source of counseling and support system. What comment would you make on that, Pinky, from an Indian, Kenyan Indian perspective? Pinky? Um, um, I think, mm -hmm. you see, like for me, um, or with the Indian tradition, and I, I think this goes back again to olden times although for me a, a lot of people ask me why why do you still live with your in-laws i'm a modern indian woman but i live with my in-laws i think um in olden times you know girls were much younger when they'd get married and um mm -hmm. they needed the mother figure to mold them etc um jockey i i don't know if i completely understood your question because there was a lot of crackling a lot of noise okay but all right okay it was just a comment on in law relationship with in law. Wow, yeah, somebody has a lot of cracking. Yeah, uh, you not in the zoo. I unplugged mine. Okay, let me see. Nice is on uh, nice is on uh, okay. okay. It might be coming from Pinky. Pinky, can I give you a moment to and because you're also standing, I think you're uncomfortable. Can I give you a moment to settle properly? I can remove you from the screen for two minutes. Okay, while well, we get Pinky, because I think in trying to get away from the kids, she's standing, so she might be getting tired. So let me give her a chance to sit down. Yeah, okay. So um, back to the in-laws, where well, we wait for Pinky to come back. Um, let's look at the black sheep. I think we haven't talked enough about the black sheep. Is it that because of our culture, People don't want to be told the truth because most of the time our black sheep, I'll bring Pinky back. I think she's settled. Um, yeah, Pinky, you okay now? Yeah. So um, let me talk about the black sheep. In this film, Pinky, the black sheep in the family is the one who just, she just black things out, you know, doesn't she? She says the wrong things at the wrong time, but they're the truth, the hard truth. So could it be that in our culture here in Africa, um, we are not supposed to say things as they are. We are supposed to come up large and, and, and not wash dirty linen in public. And, you know, does that help with relationships or does it make us have a very hypocritical life? Who wants to go ahead on that? <laughs> all right oh nice okay go nice go nice go and tear it up <laughs> okay so i think we are very comfortable being lied to and we're very comfortable only hearing nice things about ourselves and half the time when we ask for advice we want to hear what we want to hear and so people like this main character are definitely not favorites in this society just because we don't we don't think the truth is a good thing. I come from a, a point, I, I come from a, a school of thought that says, we waste, nitty gritties sometimes waste time, okay? We, we, we waste so much time with the, hello, how are you? How was yesterday? Yet all I want to do is, hi, Jockey, you well? Are you hiring new actors? But then I <laughs> go and pick corners and go and go and go. Mm. So sometimes there's nothing wrong with being direct. I think we should be more, accepting towards people who are direct because when you think about it they save us a lot of time and a lot of heartache but is africa ready for that that direct speaking nice you and i know i Let also from the I will ask right another here. question is africa ready for that i will yeah. ask answer the question with another question were we ready for a laptop <laughs> were we ready for internet <laughs> were we okay. ready for half the things we have no they yes. happen yeah. and then we realize oh this might actually work. Yes. So we never know. Human beings don't know what we want until something works and then we realize, oh, this is what we have been missing. Yeah, like yeah. how COVID came and then we realized what we really needed to do. Let me say yeah. something about that, Njoki, about your question. 
First of mm -hmm. all, I believe uh, women were obviously were raised to be seen and to be heard. So mm -hmm. when, when you voice anything, it comes out, you know, like, whoa, whoa, she's actually speaking, you know? It's, yeah. you know, it's society like that. Mm -hmm. However, I think that time, that era is bypassed and gone. First of all, we are now in a global space. And some of us are raising global children. Our children speak. Our children speak their minds. Our children, you, you negotiate. Our children, you listen. You don't just say no because you are the mother, just because. No, 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 no. They will ask you why. And you have to explain why no is a no or even why a yes is a yes. So I believe we are so ready because, first of all, we are in a global space. The room for up, we are Africans is no longer there. I mean, we are, don't get me wrong, but we are Africans in a global space. And we have to learn to have conversations. We have to learn to negotiate. We have to be heard, especially for us who are raising global citizens. Whether it's a girl or a boy, it does not matter. Because on a global platform, your skill, your product sells itself. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with whether you're feminine or you're masculine. There, there are people who argue by being global, we are losing our African identity. We don't How have to draw the line. Yeah. We don't have to. We don't have to lose. You, no, but first of all, what, what do you mean you lose you? Nana, I'm losing Nana. Where am I losing Nana? You know, I'm not. That's what you're telling me if I go to school and learn French, I'll forget Swahili and Kikuyu and Kijaluo. Mm -hmm. Just because I learn an extra skill doesn't mean I throw what I know away. I feel it's an escapist way of thinking. You know, I believe, I, I believe in Joku. Yes. Growth, growth is about expanding your plate. Mm -hmm. Today I know Kikuyu, tomorrow I add Swahili, then I add English, then I add French, then Chinese, then German. It's about expanding my plate without losing who I am at the core. Yes. And the more I expand in Joki, the more I am at the core becomes more valuable because I never want to lose that even as I travel yeah. the globe. I love and that. When, we and back home. Yes. when we go back to African culture again I'll say this not so long ago we I grew up being told for the non-Swahili speakers that means if an older person tells you something you have to listen you have to obey them but nowadays you won't let your kids do that there are people molesting children left right and center so does yeah. that mean we've lost our culture because we don't listen, obey elders? No, not all elders are actual elders. Just being older doesn't make you an elder. Yes. So no, we are not losing anything by evolving and by learning more. I don't think yeah. so. I like that. And I think, Nana, you've put it very well. Our question is, by the way, we are getting apologies from Pinky. She's still trying to get back. Um, our, Nana, the time with Jockey as usual. I know, and I'm looking at the time as well. So I think, Nana, something you have said that to me is very important and it kind of summarizes our discussion to some extent. And nice, you've also alluded to it. That core of who we are doesn't go, you know? We might wear makeup, we might wear glasses, we might wear different clothes, we might speak a different language. We might have, we might, we are the Commonwealth business women group. We might also pick up the manners of the queen, but that doesn't make us less African, you know? Uh, but that is for the individual, don't you think so? It's the individual knowing this is who I am. But if you're denying who you are, then yeah, you'll be there flowing out of space, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. So let's look for some concluding remarks. Believe it or not, it's 6.03 and we're supposed to finish this at 6 on the door. I know nicer when you're looking at me like, where did time go? It's always the same reaction. Where did time go? Because I think in Africa, we are very good at talking. We can talk to your cows, come home, you know? So nice. Can you think of some concluding remarks on this? Um. Okay, okay. This, there was a noise. Um, concluding mm -hmm. remarks, I'll say, as always, I like to say, do not be afraid of being who you are. Normal 
abnormal, weird. It it all the label doesn't matter as long as you're living your own truth. Mm-hmm. It's okay to make mistakes because again, living your own truth doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you know it all. You'll get to a point like our main character where that, where you'll make actual mistakes. But if you're living your truth and you're comfortable with who you are, you will learn from the mistake and move on. Don't need to conform. That is so true. Thank you. For me, I'll say a few words and I take us back to Nana. This film, one thing, to, one, one of the things this film told me is taught and taught me. It's okay to be African. Even our problems can be a source of entertainment. It's a lot of humor. <laughs> Weddings are functions for humor that later on you'll be looking back and just laugh your head off. My own sibling, how we're, he, how we're doing, we gave up. Even remove, we were mates and we removed our clothes, went back to our work clothes because we knew there was not going to be wedding. Church was supposed to be at 10. We only made it at 3 p.m. We had all given up. And it was all the same thing of in-laws and all that. And what I loved about my own sibling is that all the time she was laughing her head off. She thought it was hilarious, you know? So I think that is Africa for you. These things will always happen. And like we always say that even in the village, what entertainment do you think they get? These are the functions where they get their full networking and entertainment. It's Africa. It's a trademark of Africa. And I embrace it fully. But if then it does some individuals and relationships are strained, then that's when it's a problem. And like Nana has said, in-laws can also be a very strong support system. And it's for both the couple and the in-laws to appreciate that. And I feel, watching this movie, giving each other space to be what you want and not treating the whole world like they should be a clone of you. And if they are not you, you must have made the mistake in the factory of human beings, then I think it's you who's got a problem. That was one of the major lessons I learned. Now over to you, Nana, for some concluding remarks. What I, I took home from this movie with this uh, in-laws and the interference, for me really it was, this is the nature of love. Mm-hmm. And if you don't grasp who you are at the core, you will always lose it. And it doesn't have to come in the name of in-laws. It can come even in the corporate world, how everybody is in your business. It can come to people like nice who are in the media and everywhere, how people attack you from everywhere, yes. all in your business. Yes. If you lose focus on what really matters and you start focusing on the noise, I call it noise. And noise may come in different forms, whether it's in-laws, whether it is colleagues, whether it's competitors, it doesn't matter. The noise comes in different forms. If you lose who you are at the core, you will always lose it. You will always lose it. You must have that ability to keep yourself steady, strong, focused, around, amongst, amidst the noise. That's really the lesson that I can pass on to every especially young person. The noise is everywhere. You just must learn to block it and focus on what your mission is for the end of the day. Excellent. And as close, I have also seen that our vice Chair Pauline Warui was in, in the house. A call out and shout out to her. Oh, today we've had a lot of uh, our yes. members, uh, with us. I would like to end that and say, oh my goodness, as usual, we've run out of time. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, I know you're all going to be sad like me. Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya Film Night will now be once a month. So... Njoki is going to tell us when the next one will be in the month of February. What are we and- supposed to do with our three weeks? <laughs> no, the beauty about it is, you know, like some people say, oh, I didn't log on because I hadn't watched the film. I didn't have the time. So now people have three weeks to watch oh. and review the film, even okay. discuss it with other people and then say, let's all meet there and fight it out. So that's watch it. We want it to be a bigger occasion. We want more time to look for films. Notice yeah. we've moved 
from mixing international films to being so purely African films. Because mm. we realize the minute you put your mind on, there are enough good films in Africa. We are finding them. And we're yeah. finding them from all over the continent. And I'm loving yes. that. Yes. yes. So okay. I think that give thanks to, I can see somebody called Desa Mushiri. Florence, who's uh, given us a concluding remarks. Our daughter's value can never be quantified by the amount of money we receive from the boys' family, which ties to what Nana has just said. It's who we are in the call. And the counselor, who was our first person, in. Thank you so much. Oh, Salome Yetoho, I hadn't seen you. Shout out to you. Yeah, not enough is said about happy marriages. I like that. Salome being a HR expert, I'm sure there's so much you've come across on this because marriage problems also end up in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so much. Yeah. so many. So can we say goodbye? I think we, this topic is an interface. Thank you, everybody. Just, like the, movie, just like the movie, I think it's three or four episodes, you know? So, ladies, thank you so much. You've been so Thank great. you. Nana, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. You can get a recording of this episode from our YouTube in, in 48 hours. Please draw your friends there. Let's continue with the discussion. 48 hours, the recording of this um, discussion will be on the CEWK YouTube. Thank you. And now to everybody, go to www.cbwnkenya. Dot .org and register to become a member of CBWN Kenya. So many opportunities are coming along. Bye-bye. Thank you, ladies. Love you. Bye-bye.